Now, every time I hit this button, this t every time I hit this button, this text should change. So look over here. Okay. So if I hit it again, what's going to happen? If you said it's going to say my number is two, you should be good, right? We'll add it again, hit it again, and every time we hit it, it's adding one to that number and it's printing that to the screen. You see that? Again, let's look at the code. I have a my text ob object from text. I have an integer. I set the integer equal to one when the program first fires up. And then every time this button's pressed, I've set the texture part of the, my text to my number is, and we add on that integer. Now, you're, you might be looking at this, and you're asking why we have this space. Well, let me show you. If we delete this space, file, save all, what do you think is going to happen? Let's check this out. Okay, let's hit play button. You see what it did? It took away that space between is and for. It took away the space between is and for. See that? Okay. Now, let's go back to our script. And now, we did say that we wanted to only do three numbers. So let's say we only wanted it to go between the numbers 1, 2, and 3. So we'll have to add a little bit more code to this logic to make that work. And one of the easiest ways we can do this is we can embed this whole piece in an if statement. If statements are really cool because you, if statements are coming where you start introducing more logic in your scripting, and you can start comparing things together and only hit pieces of code if certain conditions are met, right? So I'll show you what I'm thinking we could do. We could say if my int, and we only uh, we only want it to go in this code if my int is. We only want it to go in that code if my int is less than uh, what four, right? Because we want to go between numbers one, two, and three, and if we add one number to it every time, then it will go start with one, which is definitely less than four, two, which is less than four, three, which is less than four. If we add another one, then it won't hit the code, but it should do something else. It should set the code back to one and print it, right? So again, it should go one, two, three. When I hit the button again, it should set it back to one, two, three, hit it again. So let's say if my int is less than four, then I'm going to fix that. Okay. So if my int is less than four, then we're going to do that. We're going to replace the text with my int. And we're going to add one to it. Now, if it's not less than four, that means that it's got to be greater than four. If it's greater than four, so then we're going to put this, these are called if else statements. We're going to if else. Oh, I don't like that it's doing that. There we go. So, if else, so if it goes through here and it adds one to it, and we and it's greater than four, we are going to set my int. We're going to set it equal to one. We're going to set it back to one. Then I'm just going to copy this line of code here. I'm going to paste that here. And then I'm going to copy this line of code here. And I'm going to paste it right underneath. So let's walk through this code and what it should do. When the first time I hit the button, well, we know that my int, as we see up here, is equal to one. So the first time I hit this code, my int's going to equal one. So it's definitely less than four. So it's going to hit this code. It's going to add one to it. So then my int is going to be equal to two. Next time I hit the button, it's it's going to skip this else statement because it's still less than four. Next time I hit the button, it's going to hit my n is less than four. Well, it's two, so it is. It's going to hit this code. Then it's going to add one more. Then we're at three. Next time I hit the button, it's going to come in here. Yes, three is less than four. This is going to get replaced in the uh, my my text variable. And then it's going to add one. So now it's four. Okay. 
Now we go in here and we say, if my int is less than four, well, no, it's equal to four now. So then it's going to skip all of this code. It's going to go to the else statement. It's going to set it equal to one and it should print one. And then it's going to add one more to it, which would be two. And then it goes up here. Yes. It, and so now it's, see, it's going to go through this loop. So let's make sure we saved it. File, save all. Let's go back to Unity. Again, it's going to compile. We can see down there on the bottom right. Our console is not giving us any error. So now let's test what we've written and see if it works. Hit the play button. Then we're going to hit this button. Text. Okay, that's one, two, three. Now the next one, it should go to one. There you go. One, two, three. And it will keep going through those. So you see, we still don't have the space back. So let's go fix that. We'll go back here. Let's put the space right back there. We'll do the same thing here. File, save all, go back to Unity. Look at the bottom right, it's compiling. We don't have any errors, that's good. Let's play it, make sure that it does what it's supposed to do. Hit the button, one, two, three. Cool. So one thing that I noticed when I start this, that this thing says new text is all is there. And that's because if we look back at the text and here, we'll see that it's written there. So a couple ways we can go about this. The, the easiest way is we can just go here and we can just delete that and it's always gone, right? Uh, another way we can do it, say, let's control Z that, let's put that there. Let's say you're not sure when the program runs what is in any of your text. So we can always go and add a line of code that initializes that. So we can take this my text variable and click here in the start method. And we can say my text equals, and then we're going to do two, exclama uh, two quotations to make it equal to nothing. So we'll file, save all. I'll go right here. Oh, it's giving us this error. It says cannot implicitly convert type string to Unity UI text. And what that means, if we go back and look, this is a UI text, but the string part of a text is dot text. And that just comes from, you know, experience and reading the Unity documentation that I would know that. Um, a good thing that you could always do, if you ever have an error like this, you can always copy this error code from right here and go and Google that and it will put you right on the page in Unity where you need to go to figure out the answer to that. And you can always email me or comment in this video and I'll help you out as well. Let's clear that. Well, first of all, let's go back to where we fixed that. We'll go to file, save all, go back here. It's compiling. And now error is gone. So from that code we wrote, when I start this program, it should clear out that text. Let's see if it does. There you go. Every time I hit the button, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. All right, guys. So now you, you know how to pull in a UI text. You know how to code for that text and as far as changing that text out when, when the program is running. So, uh, so yeah, so play around with that. Maybe, maybe try some of your own combinations. Um, maybe look at some other uh, script writing things too. Uh, a bonus thing would be was, uh, I tell you what, that's, that, that's what we should do. We should give you a bonus. How can you randomly pick the number? So you'd have to have a random number generator is one thing you can do. So, but it works better when you have a larger data set. So maybe if you tried to do, you know, you would have it print to the screen, a number between, let's say one in 10 or one in 20, and it would print that number here every time, random, at random, it would always pick it and it would change it. Um, and then if you get that going, then you can try to do a random number that never duplicates. So you would do a random number between one and 20. So the first time you went through, you had five. The second time you went through, you couldn't have five, but you would do any other number from there at random and then so forth until you're left with no options, but the last number remaining. 
So that's kind of a variant uh, for a test for you to see if you can do it. And we may explore that in the next video. But in the next video, we're definitely going to be looking at uh, now that we have the button changing this text every time we hit it, let's have the button change this image every time we hit it. So we're going to look at bringing in uh, sprites and we're going to talk about some best practices for bringing in images from Unity um, and, and, and how to optimize those as well. So, so yeah, so again, <clears throat> so next time we get here, we're going to be, now that we have the text changing every time we hit the button, we're going to have this image up here change every time we hit the button as well. And, and then that will be the end of our Hello World series. So I, I look forward to seeing you in the next video and uh, good luck guys. And yeah, play around with the text for a little bit and see what you can get going. All right. All right. See you next time.